Okay. There we okay. go. There we so, go. So yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. So um, <clears throat> Patrick asked uh, for some information about Chef, and I sent him to the recently released docs.opscode.com. I should say that this is the official documentation site for Opscode Chef. Uh, and that this is also a work in progress. So uh, there are certainly some pieces that are missing from this site where folks can go to the wiki to get those holes sort of filled in. But over the uh, course of the next few months, we'll be migrating most of the uh, documentation from the wiki site over to docs.opscode.com. One of the things that's here today is the overview of Chef. And so, as you see here, Patrick is showing us this diagram that gives a pretty good introduction to the various components of Chef. And this is sort of what I want to talk about uh, today and what we're going to get set up. So the, mm -hmm. at a very high level, there are three different components that you're dealing with when you're working with a Chef in infrastructure. The first is the workstations. Now that's down at the bottom of that diagram there. The workstation itself is typically your local development uh, laptop or development workstation. It's from this uh, location that we're going to interact with the Chef server. We're going to interact with our Chef repository, so that might be a GitHub repos or a Git repository or a Subversion repository, something like that. This will essentially be our local development environment. Now, from this local development environment, as I mentioned, we'll be able to interact with the Chef server. So the Chef server stores all of the details that we're creating within Chef, things like cookbooks and roles, which we'll talk about in turn. And then the third component here are the nodes. A node, essentially think of a node as a server, or an, uh, a vir whether that's a virtual machine or a physical instance, uh, think of a node as a, a thing that runs the Chef client. So the idea mm -hmm. here at a very high level is that we're going to use our workstation to develop things like cookbooks. We will push those cookbooks up to the Chef server. Once they're mm -hmm. on the Chef server, there will be nodes that are managed by Chef. Those nodes will pull data from the Chef server, pull it down to their mm -hmm. local instance, and then execute Chef client, execute those recipes. So that's mm -hmm. what we're going to walk through today. And for our, our generic setup that we're going to do as part of this, you know, helping you get started here, Patrick, we're going to mm -hmm. use Vagrant as a node, mm -hmm. a, a Vagrant VM that's running mm -hmm. locally on your machine. And from there, we will uh, configure this demo application and we'll get set up with Chef. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I, the demo application I've set up, it's just a standard Rails blog post uh, here. Um, yeah. And it's um, driven by MongoDB then. Um, yeah. Great. Okay, so and so that's all running locally, the, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's uh, here in this window, uh, the normal um, lock, right. Rails lock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So. Um, okay. So I was just going to say that uh, as we look at the Chef server, there are a couple of options that we can uh, use in order to get the Chef server running. Um, one of the things that I'd like to do, or the the option that I'd like to use uh, for our learning purposes is hosted chef. Now, Opscode offers hosted chef as a way of managing your chef server for you. Uh, and the nice thing about hosted chef is that you can set up, or one of the nice things about hosted chef is that you can set up five nodes running on your hosted chef server for free. Mm -hmm. uh, and so it makes it a great place for you to get started with chef. 